thank you for inviting me here to lecture at this uh, selective uh, public. Uh, Christian art under Ottoman rule, or in more in general Christian art under uh, Islamic rule, is a um, very controversial topic, and uh, much has been written about it by people who sit in their study and look only out of the window uh, and have only a pen in their hand or now this kind of machine. Um, the result is that um, if you go in the countryside, you find a totally different picture. And I've been doing this since, uh, since 1959, so uh, quite a long time. There is a long line, line of cliches and assumptions that are unfounded. I have to say from the very beginning, <coughs> Islamic art, uh, Christian art under uh, Islamic rule, okay. But if you twist it around, turn it around, and you have... Uh, you try to look Islamic art under Christian rule, you were finished uh, the same moment. There is not. So this is great principle difference. And then another important thing is uh, the Islam does not exist. There is no Pope, an Islamic Pope. There is no Sino, there is no Kuria looking for the, uh, for the right religion. Uh, every country or district has its own version of Islam and uh, what, uh, what I tell you now is basically the Ottoman Islam in the Balkans, in Anatolia, it still needs to be studied, Christian art <coughs> under, uh, under Ottoman rule. Few, few things have been uh, done in in the last years, I still remember one colleague at the Con International Congress of, uh, of Turkish Art saying, what do we do with the Ottoman Church? So the problem is mentioned. There are no, now some very fine publications on Ottoman churches. But it is not uh, enough to get a general overview. We have to restrict us to the Balkans. And, uh, you can be sure that uh, Iraq, Syria or Egypt, the situation uh, is or could have been uh, different from what I tell you now. Uh, from the beginning, before, uh, before the, the Turks accepted Islam long ago, the Islamic law, the Sharia, was uh, already coined, written down. And, uh, the Turks, very important, choose the most flexible of the four schools of classical Islamic law, the Hanafid. Uh, if you go to Northern Africa, uh, Morocco for example, uh, they choose the Malikid rule, which is very stiff. And this choice in the past thousand years ago still works for centuries and centuries uh, un until today, shaping the way uh, people behave. Uh, I came long ago with a group of students in a mosque uh, in Uskedar, the Eski Valide, and uh, there was just prayer time, and the muezzin welcome sit down there in the corner and <coughs> everything fine. I was in Tunisia, which is the most liberal of the Manikid countries, and I was together with the head of the, uh, of the archaeological service in the courtyard of the, the Zetunia Mosque in Tunis City, and someone came and did <laughs> so, with his finger, yeah. So, uh, th this was enough for uh, North Africa for me. <laughs> Good, the Sharia was formed long before the Ottomans came in the field. 
churches, bishops, archbishops, the whole structure of the church uh, was decided, was free, they could do what they want in, inside the framework of the law. The congregation decided about bishops and about abbots of monastery, so internal, the sultan only confirmed the person or he rejected, but he, he had no right to mix in in the internal affairs uh, of the church. Uh, if we look to a country like uh, Holland, such things were in the past impossible. The Roman Catholics and the Mennonites, Baptists, they had no religious organization, they had no right to make schools, no right to have uh, hospitals for their co-religionists. Churches, they, in Holland they were very tolerant, they said, said, but, well, they closed their eyes more or less and let them have a church in the form of a house or in Amsterdam you can see a spectacular example on the top of a, of a, of a big house on one of the canals. There is a hidden church. They were really hidden. And the Mennonites could build their churches, but they had to, they had to stay uh, away from the street, not visible, and they had to have a form, farm of a farmhouse or a barn or something. Well, uh, England has a long line of persecution. Uh, France, the the Bartholomeus night, the expulsion of the, of the Huguenots or of the Protestants and all this uh, more. At the same time, Christians in the Balkans had a very different and a much easier life. But Balkan historiography is very much introverted. They only see their own little life, don't look over the edge of their of their plates in other countries and all feel terrible sorry for themselves. Oh, oh, they suffered so much. We go on for hours about this. Uh, well, the Shariat did not allow to make new churches. Um, churches could be restored or newly built even on the base of old ones. The Shariat did not mix in with fresco decoration inside, with uh, metalwork, liturgical uh, objects, with icons uh, and so on. They had no influence. It was only the structure of the building. So, the idea is no new churches. This is a popular belief and you can find it everywhere in the literature. <coughs> if it is correct, it is another thing. So, let's have a look. As an introduction, Athens, a green color of Islam, green is a bit pale in the, in the procedure, the ultimate buildings, uh, schools, baths, mosques, interspersed with lots of churches all around, no ghetto for Christians or for else, everything nicely mixed. This is well, the practice. Uh, this is after Travlos, John Travlos, the great expert of the history, the urban history of Athens. Well, for Bulgaria, BG means Bulgaria, very simple. And they are churches from the Middle Ages, some of the biggest, the patriarchal uh, church in Tirnovo, in the capital, and also smaller ones, all sorts. And next to that, churches from the Ottoman period. Well, what is left over of the idea of Christian churches should be low, should be dug into the earth. Uh, they should be small, they cannot be enlarged, and they were uh, much less 
important architecturally than the great works of the Middle Ages and so on. Well, please, have a look. That churches are dug into the earth, that they are small and in, uh, invisible, hidden away. Well, here you see a nice 16th century example, that Nisveti Ivan, above the village of Tselinci in western Bulgaria. Uh, it can be seen from miles away. It is a simple village church with three apps, so that's four, three choirs. And uh, is an example of the many hundreds there have been, and we have reports or travelers write about them, but their sur the surviving ones are very limited. And in this context, it should be said that after the Second World War, when the Communist uh, Party came in power, the first ten years massively against churches, against religion, and everywhere churches were demolished, including their own uh, 10th, 11th, 12th century uh, monastery churches or whatsoever. And that this policy stopped but the buildings are gone forever. The fresco painting. The Turks are to blame for uh, the frescoes cut to pieces, but here the people who did it uh, actually left their names, so no discussion needed. <laughs> Well, same story, churches are hidden away, are half dug in. Some are, really, I must, uh, I must uh, add. But um, this one in an area, western Greece, Akarnania, beautiful land. Uh, this is Lake Ozero, Ozero Slavic, means lake, so lake, lake. And uh, in the background, uh, you see the, uh, the plateau of Akanania with a number of uh, churches also visible from far away, visible from the Muslim settlements below in the plain. Only in the whole area, only one minaret left over after the Greek, uh, Greece became independent. All the other things were gone, destroyed. The monastery of St. George in Barbini, also visible from afar, nicely painted inside. The form shows you a further development of the so-called cross in uh, square churches or the, the well, there is a, uh, a German uh, <coughs> term, uh, is therefore, but keep it to the end, it's cross in square, four pillars, dome. Uh, the Byzantine prototypes were much smaller than this one. And uh, another example, Chrysovica, also a mixed Greek Slavic name because many Slavs have been living there in the past. But it is a team which does not suit the Greek nationalist uh, education, so there is not spoken about this. Uh, you see, if you look carefully, you see here the lake we saw at some slides earlier at, uh, at Ozero, and near that in this plain area near the lake, it was, was the great. Uh, Ottoman Muslim town of uh, uh, Agrinio. Today, absolutely nothing left. Uh, but a few people still remember the place where the mosques uh, has been, have been. So let's go and let's take another example. This is the Church of Lado Nagorichane in. East of Skopje, it's situated on the old highway 
and until six, seven years ago, still in use. Now there is made a bypass, the main road from Skopje, Uskup, this important center of communication in Skopje, Macedonia, uh, by way of Kustendil, Samokov, uh, Filibe, Edirne to Istanbul, one of the main roads. The church is just standing 40, 50 meters away above the main road. It could be seen by everybody. It is, uh, should be dated second half 16th century. Serbian uh, art historians uh, agree with this strongly. The low dome is uh, explained uh, by not provoking too much all these Muslims passing uh, through by too big and uh, too uh, great uh, imposing uh, churches. So this was a, uh, a concession. Well, in this area, in the 10th and the 11th century, 12th century, still lived a group of Armenian deportees. Uh, deported by the Emperor Romanos uh, Diogenes, the one who lost the Battle of Mansikert, which opened the gates for Anatolia. These Armenians slowly were assimilated in the Slavic mass, but their way of working with stone, entirely different from the local uh, brick and, uh, and stone work in the Byzantine uh, tradition, uh, this kind of work survived, uh, at least into the early 17th century. There is a whole group of churches in this, uh, this remarkable style. Pointed arch, which is, well, Ottoman, and the decoration, well, you might uh, find out yourself how to, uh, how to call it. It is an, in the synthesis of various uh, elements. Um, well, I hope this point is, is clear. Underground churches uh, is, uh, are existing. But the others are also existing in an imposing number and, uh, well, beautiful to look at. About one of the churches deep in the earth, you have to go to uh, Thessaloniki, to Selanik, the Panagia Chalkeion, the church from the 11th century, sits till its neck almost in the earth. Not by the nasty Ottomans or the Shariat who the who did that, but because of the numerous fires, destructions, it lives on a slope, so the materials come down with rain and so on, and over the centuries it piled up. Uh, a second aspect, there are some churches situated near uh, rivers where the soil is not so good, sunk uh, in, the air, in the earth some steps, buildings do that. My own old church in Amsterdam, where I spent so many years, uh, also was doing that and, and was also leaning, moving in the weak soil. Uh, in a recent study by German and Russian specialists of the big cathedral of Königsberg in Preussen, after the Second World War, uh, during the Second World War conquered by the Russian army and now it's Kaliningrad, this church, it was proved, has sunk 1 meter 75 centimeters, that is that much, into the earth over the 600 years it exists. So these factors have, all, have to be taken in account and you can be sure there are a few church examples are uh, left over genuine where you indeed have to go uh, a few steps down but it is not the general picture. Now, all churches could not be enlarged. That's a rule in the Shariat and all the four schools agree uh, about that. Now, what happened? You see it yourself. The small monastic church of Nikola Toplitsko, 14th century, 
and as it was restored and enlarged in the Sulaymanic time. So, is it with the permission of the Sultan? Unknown. No. But it is in open land, it is not uh, stuck away far in the woods or whatsoever. We don't know. Uh, same thing here, Jelezna, the old church and the enlarged one. Again, not possible. We cannot study this church because it was one destroyed by the, by the communists. But there is documentation about it. Next example, the town, the small town of Arbanasi, which started as a village in 1519. It is on the in the Ottoman uh, Tahrir Defters, the taxation and, uh, and population registers. It is mentioned as a new village, not in the previous register, which is from 1485 which also preserved, it was not there, settled by Albanians, Arbanas, um, nine houses at that time. Then it got a privileged position, it was acquired by Grand Vizier Rustem Pasha, who cared for privileges, gave it a good status, more Albanians came to settle there, it grew rapidly, Yeah, and in uh, the, according to the 1585 register of the Sanjak of Nicopol, in where it is uh, situated, it had 277 houses, this place. Now, what happened with the churches? Arbanasi grew further, it became a place of 700 houses. Oh, very wealthy. Some of the houses from the 18th century are preserved. You can see how these people live. The church grew step by step together with the village. Absolutely contrary to the law. Uh, agents of the Waqf were living in the village as well as some, uh, some people to uh, protect it. They didn't care. Well, let them go. The basic element of this, uh, well, let them do uh, a mentality of, of the Ottomans is when things are in balance, okay, leave it. Uh, when local circumstances were bad, when people opposed each other, like in, in Sofia, very, very clear, uh, nothing could be done. You, can, you didn't get permission or you get the absolute minimum. This was your church. From the Middle Ages, okay, you can repair it, but nothing more. And for the rest, they close their eyes. <coughs> Good example, village church of Eiani in Greek Macedonia. You don't need to be uh, an expert to see that here, this has been added. Masonry is different. Instead of a monoclete church, one nave, it became a basilica of three, uh, three naves. In the area was a mixed population. Uh, lots of uh, Yuruks were living there. So, Muslims, Turkey speaking, they didn't care. Let them do. The Metamorphosis Church monastery in the village of Eyani, uh, well dated, 7790, 7, that is the year of the creation of the world. The Byzantines knew exactly when the world was created, so better start with that date. In our calendar it is 1571-72. The Ottoman records from 156 1540 and 1569 do not mention the monastery. And then suddenly it appears. You can see it is built of broken stone. That's visible. And
And then, in 1592, a big narthex, an extra room, entrance room, was added. And as you see, Ottoman arch, totally different masonry. I would say even a blind person could see that this has been added later. If you touch with your fingers the core surface of that work and the fine masonry of the, of the new part of the building. Uh, this monastery was, it existed into the 19th century, was deserted, no Ottomans around, they were gone, and the Christian villagers uh, demolished the monastic buildings, the refectory, uh, the, the monk cells and so on, and recycled the stones, but happily enough they left the church. That's the inscription giving the date of 7079. Uh, letters cut into the stone but filled with lead. It's a very rare uh, technique. It is mostly known from Italy. It was all used in this area. Uh, you also need, don't need to be an expert to see that you get two building, uh, building stages. The nice monastery church of Georgios Arma, built in 1578, also not mentioned in the Ottoman records. And they stop at 1570. It, unfortunately, it is the last uh, Mofasal Tahrir Defter which we have at our disposal. And then a narthex was added in the form of a small provincial Ottoman domed uh, mosque. Different of construction, different of form. The Ottoman inspectors came almost every year to collect the poll tax in uh, the village and had the lists of the property of the monastery which were taxed uh, 10%. Uh, so they knew exactly where those places were. Now suddenly there is a new church. Now, uh, okay, there are no troubles here, we don't make troubles. Yeah, fresco painting in this strange uh, narthex. Very rich paintings illustrating, I don't know how fixed you are with the Bible, but uh, the Psalms are sometimes very beautiful. And this is, they praise the Lord, uh, all, the, all the creatures in the world. So creeping things, uh, birds, worms, uh, human beings of course, uh, dancing around. All thank the Lord that they live on earth. It's very beautiful. Well, I said new churches could not be built, and we better have a look again, not in the books, and not in the law books or whatsoever, but in the countryside. If we take together, we saw some of the churches of the area of Karlili. Uh, the most important is the second part of the list. This is based on the Ottoman registers the amount of taxation, the description where the place was, it's every, everything is there. Now, look here, and look here. This is the practice, this is not, not the theory, and it escaped all the people who sit down and, uh, and in, in their office and don't go in the field. So, no new churches, according to the Sheriat, but what happened? In a beautiful uh, open valley in the north of Bosnia, Mostanica, is a very nice example of what could be done in the 16th century in specific areas. The, uh, a big part of the Ottoman garrisons and the military uh, apparatus 
uh, where local uh, vlag Christians, Iflak, cattle, cattle breeders, very, uh, very mobile. And this was bordering on Hungary, uh, a warlike, uh, militant, Roman Catholic uh, country. And uh, the, the Serbs are Orthodox, uh, as is well known. The Vlachs are the Orthodox. Uh, these were excellent people to use in, uh, in border areas. If the enemy came in, they could withdraw uh, with, their, uh, with their animals. Uh, the Ottomans also dependent on the goodwill of the locals. And the locals were religious wanted to have churches, monasteries, and so on, and they came, Shariat or not. And there are even letters preserved in the Muhimmed Eftelleri, the correspondence from Istanbul uh, with the provinces, where the local uh, bay, the Sanjak bay, said, Abbot so-and-so did so much in this area for, uh, for the well-being and the reconstruction Please grant uh, his monastery a Timar. So, uh, landed, landed property. Uh, in northern Bosnia, we have at least the monastery of Gomionica, Lipje, Mostanica, shown here. Osirn, Papracar, Manje, Tamja, and Vozuca, a whole list. They all are creations from the Ottoman period from the 16th century, largely the, the second half of the 16th century. Mostanica is first mentioned, as I write on the text, 1579. And the special thing is it shows profound Ottoman influence on the, the construction of the building. Inside you can see it, there are, uh, this picture is rather bad, but I should have to go again. This was uh, made beginning of this year. I should go again. And I was in 1969, I was uh, also in uh, Bostanica because it occupies a very special place. Where on churches see, do you see Mokarna's uh, capitals, for example? And the Ottoman window with the four-centered arch, not the round window which you do with your, uh, with your, uh, uh, think what what is the name? Uh, if you write, if you make circles, oh. ruler. This is four different <coughs> points from where this arch is constructed. If you are a normal builder, you don't know how to do that. This tells you that the local, the people who made it, had also yeah. had a training in Ottoman construction work. They also worked for Ottoman Yeah, they worked, yeah, uh, they worked for, the, for the one who wanted the building, oh. never mind what. Well, well. Yeah, this is of course a very nice mixture, mixture of, uh, of cultures uh, coming together. The, the arch which could be taken just from any mosque anywhere and then um, Saint Michael, Michael fighting the, fighting the monster, the dragon, two cultures mixed. Um, sometimes people say below this church is the ruin of something else. Well, we don't know, not in this place. Uh, big excavations were done in the monastery of Gomionica in that same no area northern Bosnia. No trace of any old building. So, theories, not practice. Yeah, we go to Athens. Six representative examples of Byzantine churches, 11th, 12th century. You can find the plans in the Real Lexicon to Byzantine Kunst. And nine representative examples from the 16th and the 17th century. And as I showed in the beginning, they are just open, uh, strong, all around uh, 
of the town. Uh, John Travlos, who I mentioned, wrote 50 years ago, I quote, it comes as a surprise that during the Turkokratia, large number of new churches were built. Ooh. And then he said, uh, there have been a hundred churches, Athens was full of them, uh, 25 of them are still standing, 15 others are known from literature. So I show only two of them. This is a thin church, very nice, and look at the scale. Very small, elegant, cheap masonry. Yeah, well, they, they didn't, have, uh, didn't have more money to do. And now a church which stands 40 meters further on, on, uh, on the same street from the Ottoman period. Anagiroi Kolokinthi. The saints uh, uh, did without, uh, without money. Uh, helpers, uh, medical uh, people that's dedicated to it. I said uh, three times bigger than the than the, the small but high uh, Byzantine one and no dome. This was the concession they had to do. Uh, build your church not too big, don't provoke people. And so it was done. One of the 25 still standing. You might have thought, where does the money come from? Uh, in the past, Byzantino Slavic uh, societies, those who built churches, founded monasteries where the kings and the upper layer, the ruling class, and sometimes the lower nobility, uh, the upper class and the king either fled or were eliminated or perished during the Ottoman conquest, but the low nobility survived, went in Ottoman service and was able to make churches. And, uh, Serbia had the most progressive uh, art history in the time of uh, Tito and so on, where all the others were smothering in uh, feeling sorry for themselves and nationalist theories or whatsoever, a uh, Serbian uh, scholar found the name of patrons of churches in uh, today's uh, Skopje Macedonia, uh, in, uh, well, in the buildings, the inscription of the patron or the picture of the, pa uh, of the, of the patron, like this uh, uh, Haji so-and-so, Sorry, I put that at the beginning. Um, also, in the Ottoman registers, which are preserved for certain areas from 1445 onward, and the area was added to the Ottoman territories in 1395, so you can imagine this is very close in time, and you have a double check not only what the building uh, has to tell you, but also what the Ottoman documents uh, do. So the new Mecenat was partly the lower nobility surviving in the Balkans, and then a new Mecenat comes. If we still have time, I will show you something about that. Uh, the church, and therefore the the Ottoman system, or in fact also the, the, the laws of the Sharia, were very important. Bishops, archbishops, could take money as a tax, a legal tax, from each uh, Christian household. Uh, 12 akche for uh, the archbishop, 12 akche for the local bishop, or the patriarch, the, the first. Um, in the 16th century, especially in the last part of the 15th, is the Pax Ottomanica, 
the long period of peace, population grew fastly, doubled in some areas, tripled. It means that the bishop from, from 20,000 households in the, uh, in the bishopric of, of Tricala, he got 12 times 20,000 uh, in, uh, in his pocket. But the population grew, it grew, it grew to 70,000. And then he got 70,000 times 12. And this makes a big difference. And this allowed this clergy to engage in church building and monasteries. We will see a, a few. Patronage of the local nobility surviving, the nun Senia Cantacuzina, the name Cantacuzina must be known to you, fam famous Byzantine family. Uh, masonry is the local uh, cast, Kestelwerk, Cloisonne, this kind which you also find in the medieval Balkan uh, Balkan Slavic buildings. And the nun Senia presents the model of her church to, uh, to the Holy Virgin. Uh, a good example is the monastery of the Holy Trinity in, uh, today in uh, Montenegro near the town of uh, Plevje, Tashlija for uh, the Ottomans. Uh, you see the building itself, 1530-1550, and an artex uh, added in a different style. The people who built it was the abbot Visarion and his relative, the, who happened to be bishop, Nikifor. And this Nikifor had also worked to increase the landed property of the, of the monastery. Big Nartex added 1592, as you can see in plan, paid by the Sipahi, the Ottoman cavalryman, Voin, Christian, depicted as, as an old man. He stands so with the model of the church. Um, According to our dear Ottomanist colleagues, the Christian Sipahis died out 1470, 1490. But they take their Ottoman records and they take their, uh, their books and they don't go into the land where they can see the real reality. See, Christian Sipahis survived well into the 17th century. We know a couple of them uh, from 1617 painting for the, paying for the monastery of Zavala in Herzegovina with the, most, the best paintings of uh, Serbian art at all for Grigory Mitrofanovic. Yeah, uh, Plevje was, Taslija was Sanjak capital. So, town residents of the Sanjak Bay of the whole Ottoman administration. The Troitsa monastery depicted here is 15 minutes walking and not up, no, straight you can walk to it easily. Uh, that monks were able to do something against the will of the, of the local Muslim population. Plevje was more than half a Muslim town. It's unthinkable. But it came into being. And we should also know that the monastery of Plevje has one of the richest archives of the entire Balkans. It's full of Ottoman documents. And only 5% is, uh, yeah, is published. Well, we go to the monastery of Piva, in, also in Montenegro, in a secluded area. In, well, monks usually wanted not to sit in, uh, in busy towns, they in a nice valley for themselves. Piva was built between 1573 and 85, but the man who did it was the Archbishop of Herzegovina, Savatie, who happened to be 
Het kan zijn of de grandvizier met, met zo'n kolom iets. Zo'n kolom met, met Pasha. De brother of zo'n kolom met, met Pasha was patriarch of de Serbian church. The one brother head of the Christian community, the other, other of the Muslims. And well, this went on in that time. That was all possible. Uh, this uh, Sabatier was later elected Patriarch of the Serbian Church, so head of the heads, uh, elected by the Christian community and confirmed by the Sultan, as it should be according to the rules. Well, this monastery suffered very much by a fire from 1857. Um, Quite by chance, it's not a joke, there was an Ottoman army detachment in the area. And they helped to extinguish the fire. And a couple of months later, Sultan Abdul Majid gave 50,000 gurus to, for the reconstruction of the monastery. And this was quite a sum of, uh, of money. It's just Shevket Pamuk who knows every detail about the, the value of the money. It is a nice sum. Well, this is such a beautiful story. It is too beautiful to be true, but uh, it is true. So, in uh, the highlands overlooking the town of Trikala, Tirhala, in Thessaly, we get the monastery of Dusiko. Big one, very monumental, and you see how big this monastery is. There were never any rules to keep the monastic buildings smaller. They were completely free, but the church was a problem. And here we had a problem. Uh, it was not such a nice and uh, a friendly story. The church was made in 15, 1515. Uh, 1485 there was the first small community of monks settled there. There was no monastery before. 1515 the small wooden roof church was built. 1544 it was destroyed by a terrible earthquake. Uh, in the years afterwards until 15. 58, it was rebuilt with explicit permission of the Sultan, but the local Muslims down in the town of Trikala, some of them, they protested. They did not, they did not want it. And they said, well, it's much too big and it should not, and blah, blah, blah. So there was a conflict, uh, telling you that the relation between the two groups was not uh, entirely as it, sh as it should have been. Nevertheless, the monastery was built and finished, and to prevent all quarrels later, the monks had a copy made of the Firman of the Sultan with his big Tura on the wall of the monastery. This was still seen by travelers in the 19th century. In the 20th century, uh, it had to go. It's not desired anymore. A few more examples. And then we can wind up with the story. Outside Athens, the monastery of Dao Penteli, built in 1572 and later, according to a plan which Sinan started with, the hexagonal plan, the uh, Altigen, and which you see in a whole score of churches of the second half of the 16th century, built shortly before the open daily and also afterwards. It shows you that the Archbishop of Athens and some rich merchants who are responsible for the construction of the building were very much aware what was going on and what was the fashion and wanted something like that. Very imposing building. There was a ruin of a small church, not a monastery, was behind here. And this was interpreted in an elastic way. 
So uh, the big, this big monument could be created. But the ceiling, the roofs, yeah. are not covered by lead. No, tiles, just... tiles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, this monastery in the 19th, early 20th century, it was a ruin. Mm -hmm. And if it had lead, you can be sure it was uh, stolen. Or used by the army to cast bullets. Well, um, this is a whole story apart, I, uh, I have to, uh, to skip it, but this is an example of a, an international style of high quality painting connected with the patronage of the last uh, Christian uh, nobility, the last bits of it, and especially with Sultanin Mara, the stepmother of Fatih Sultan Mehmed. And Fatih Sultan Mehmed held these women in, a high, in high esteem. And if monks or whatsoever wanted to do something, uh, well, they asked uh, Sultan Inmara, uh, please can you manage a bit? Yeah. yeah, another good example. 1543, work of uh, a bishop, put his money there. And uh, it's so big, you cannot overlook it, and you can see it dig down from below from the bridge over, uh, over the river, leading from Thessaloniki down, uh, down to Athens, on the Pineos River. Stomio, Tsagesi means Chai Achse, a corrupted uh, Ottoman word. Highly monumental. And this these buildings made Slobodan Djurjic, the Serbian historian of architecture, to say that the 16th century uh, unexpectedly and contradictory must be declared the golden age of Christian architecture. He was a nationalist, but he was converted to something else and he, uh, well, came, with, I know him uh, since 40 years, and he came with a magnificent work on the architecture and of Diocletian, the emperor to Suleiman the Magnificent. He spent <coughs> his thousand years or more. I mean, if this man says such a thing, it really, the words carry weight. Oh. Inside the church, I don't Beautiful. need to comment. Beautiful. Yeah and not mentioned in the, in the Ottoman sources. There was no monastery. Yeah. One more, we are approaching the end of our travel through the Balkans. The monastery of Flamuri, as seen by uh, Vasily Grigorovic Barsky, this uh, uh, Russian uh, traveler who was an excellent uh, draftsman. This monastery can easily be seen from the sea. Over land it is a bit difficult. There was nothing on the side, virgin side, and there this big uh, church came into being. Plan. And again, church built, and uh, sometime later, when they again got money enough, enlarged by the next uh, uh, big Nartex. I wrote a special study of the village of Boboshevo, which was part of the Waqf of Esmihan Sultan, <coughs> the wife of Sokolo Mehmed Pasha. And this place, the people locally remembered that it was under the Pokrov, under the, the veil of a Sultana. Uh, they had an excellent status freedom from this, freedom from that. Uh, a few Ottoman uh, agents and policemen keep the security of the village and uh, half a dozen of churches were built in that area in the 16th and 17th century. This gives an impression uh, of the painting. So that is the, the Trinity, the, the three uh, manifestations of the Godhead and perfectly preserved. Mm -hmm. 
I forgot to mention the miners, the mining villages as one of the pillars of uh, promotion of Christian art, of sponsors. This is one example. We go on briefly. The village of Levareka, only the half of the church remained preserved. The surface of historical monuments did nothing. But happily enough, this part of the painting showing the high quality, and uh, they are dated 1592, uh, remain preserved. I hope Bulgaria is in the European Communion. They find a way to Brussels to get money, and then they also get my money, and that's okay. They use it for, for good things. The merchants, I did not, uh, I mentioned only briefly. Look at the uh, Ottoman detail here. This is the biggest example and the richest architecturally of churches protected, sponsored by the rich merchants. But uh, if we get late, we to, uh, to get to the, the last objects. Batskovo in the Rodope, uh, in south of Filibe, in the mountains, an old monastery which was rebuilt, but it was not rebuilt by merchants or rich people from Fanar, the Fanariots. No, they came from the Pindos, from central Greece, the Pindos mountains, the Vlachs. Very mobile. And here are very remarkable paintings for <coughs> the Bulgarian environment. The ancient philosophers, Aristophanes, Plato, uh, and so on, who are said to have uh, predicted the coming of Christ. And this is the work of this uh, uh, local ambulant Greek painters, but the Bulgarians claimed it for themselves village of Anovathia on the island of Evia, Evboia, Eribos, which grew in the Ottoman period. 1473 is the first register. And then you see what grew in this north in the well, better show it. In this area here, half open, half mountainous, wooded, uh, are two Monastery, monastery churches. And one of them I want to show is my favorite. It is known, only they did not know who made it. Um, there was a bishop, Yoasaf, mentioned in a ruined inscription, broken, so there were two ones. And one Byzantine and one Ottoman, 16th century. So the locals, the, the monks, nuns and so on, uh, preferred the Byzantine one and said that is Byzantine. Well, there happened to be uh, ethnic tiles. You see them. Uh, this arch is a very strange uh, mix. On the side of the church there is more uh, ethnic material. Yeah, people try to steal them and then they broke off. Uh, when this, uh, this example of the Sass style, when it came into being, is rather well known. That is after uh, 14, uh, 15, 30, 15, 40. Uh, if I am too early you should correct me. Uh, we have the patriarch is evidently not the Byzantine one. Now, the Ottoman sources come to your help. Uh, they don't mention the church. Then in 1540, the first register mentions one little monastery there. And the 1570 monastery, uh, uh, mentions the monastery of, the, of Saint uh, Nicholas uh, in, uh, inside uh, the community of uh, Anovathia. Now, so the inscription 
the Ottoman tax registers and the pottery, they all fix, we come into the Suleimanic age, which was at the same time for Christian art in the uh, in big areas of the Balkans with what's a golden century, century out or not. So, to round off, the first register, 1473, you can see the number of, of monasteries it had in this example. This was the village of Roviest on the island, where at the beginning they had one, and at the end of the, of the period covered with the Ottoman documentation, they had six monasteries. You see the property also, uh, the tax is growing, but it means their harvest was growing. And the harvest is also given in detail in the registers. Uh, wheat and uh, wine, largely. And the Ottomans also taxed wine, of course, as they taxed pigs. Never mind. Pecumia non olet. Final result. So, what to do with uh, all these theories and all these stories? Uh, for me, they are good for uh, the, rub the rubbish bin. The reality in the province is totally different. Uh, I hope you agree with this conclusion. And I thank you for your patience. Thank you.